You did it. You secured your stage at uh, one of the restaurants you had on your list of places you wanted to work more than anything. You're super excited, but you're also a little bit uh, racked in the nerve section. A um, little bit of a stressful time, I know. I've been there before. So in today's video, we're just going to talk about how to uh, properly set yourself up, get yourself prepared adequately for your stage um, without being too obtrusive to the other staff um, at the restaurant. Um, and just kind of talk to you about what your expectations should be uh, for your first day at the new restaurant. So uh, after a word from our sponsors, we'll get right into it. Ha, gotcha. It's just sharp. <laughs> so if you're new to the channel, my name is Gage and I am the owner of Sharp Knife Shop. Before I opened the shop, I had the amazing opportunity to work at some really amazing restaurants uh, around the world um, with Michelin stars. All of these restaurants require that you do what's called a stage before working at them or, or receiving like a paycheck for your time. Um, if you're unfamiliar with what a stage is, it's basically a tryout. You spend anywhere from a day to a few months at a restaurant and it's an opportunity for both the restaurant and for you to get a feel for one another and decide if it's going to be a good fit. I had the amazing opportunity of working at a three Michelin starred restaurant called Grace and a three Michelin starred restaurant called Mimo in Oslo, Grace being in Chicago. Uh, and today I thought it'd be fun for us to uh, talk about my experiences um, doing a stage at both of these restaurants in the hopes that it gives you um, a little bit of insight as to how to better prepare yourself and therefore be more successful on your stage uh, in the hopes that you will land that job at the coveted restaurant that you're seeking employment at. So first, what can you expect on your stage? Well, in my experience, uh, you are not going to be tasked with anything too important to the restaurant. Typically, you are going to be either picking herbs or doing garnish work, uh, peeling vegetables, anything that's pretty easy um, and uh, doesn't require a ton of skill to do. That's likely what you're going to be doing. It's important to remember, though, that um, uh, during these tasks, you're showing uh, your chef that you can be uh, quick and efficient and clean and organized during these tasks. And if you can perform these low level tasks at a high level, they'll trust you to do the higher level tasks as well. So with that said, let's get into what I would bring on my stage. Firstly, we're going to talk about the role. Uh, we briefly talked about this in the intro, but being as unintrusive as possible is, is very important. Uh, space is limited in a kitchen, and if you go walking into your stage with uh, everything under the kitchen sink, your toolbox with every tool you own in tow, um, you're going to look a little ridiculous. Um, like I said, you're typically just going to be peeling and, and picking herbs and stuff, so you don't need um, every, every tool that you own. So with that said, um, this Shoulder strap, though very handy to transport my knives, is going to take up space unnecessarily. So if there is a locker space at your kitchen, you're going to remove your uh, shoulder strap. Just get things that you don't need out of the way. Cool, now getting into our roll here. So first we're going to talk about the three knives that I personally would bring on a stage. What I've picked here are knives that I find to be the most versatile. They can accomplish the most amount of tasks um, while only having to bring these three. So the three knives that I'm going to bring with me are a 135 millimeter petty knife, a 165 millimeter bunka, and a 210 millimeter kuritsuke. The reason, again, I've chosen all these knives is because I feel I can accomplish the most uh, a wide variety of tasks um, while only bringing these three knives. The Kuritsuke is very similar to a Gyuto, but a little bit more focused on uh, the push and pull chopping motion and slicing. So if I get any large slicing tasks, which is very unlikely, um, I'm prepared for that. If I have any larger vegetables to chop up, I'm also prepared for that. Keep in mind that if you are doing a stage, you might be tasked with doing staff meal, um, in which case you may come across like some, some more um, like higher level tasks. Um, so having a sort of like do it all larger knife is gonna be super handy. Mid range, we've got our bunka. This is probably what I would get the most use out of on a stage. Again, you're not doing anything too crazy um, and having something uh, nimble, compact and easy to use is gonna be really, really helpful. Um, I personally use a more up and down chopping uh, motion, push and pull motion. So something with a flatter profile like this is going to be um, uh, really helpful. Finally, we've got our petty knife. 
Again, I would say that your bunka and your petty will be the most uh, widely used on a stage. Um, your petty knife, again, for more um, garnishy type work off the board, trimming stuff, doing like little tip work. Um, so a petty is super handy to have. It's also easy to leave um, on your station and keep accessible if you ever need it. So all three of these knives are made from a carbon steel called Algami Super, which is my favorite carbon steel because of its uh, amazing edge retention and ease of sharpening. I also find it to be slightly less reactive than some of the white carbon steels out there. These knives also have a stainless cladding on them. So just past that wavy line is the only uh, part of this knife with exposed carbon steel. So that's the only part of this knife that could possibly rust. Um, but I definitely want that good edge retention and the ability to bring that edge back to life really quickly uh, should the need arise. Um, so I'm happy to put up with a little bit of extra maintenance, but I would uh, be hesitant to bring an ironclad knife on a stage because I feel uh, like that you're going to be focusing too much attention, uh, mind power on keeping your knife rust free rather than keeping your mind power on the task at hand. If you disagree with any of my choices, leave a comment down below. I would love to hear uh, from you guys what knives would you bring on your stage it'd be a super super uh, fun thing to learn in addition to my knives I am going to bring with me a peeler this is probably going to be your most utilized tool on a stage uh, so make sure you got a good uh, sharp peeler I would always go out and buy a brand new one of these um, anytime I was going to do a stage um, and uh, in most scenarios I got a lot of use out of these on my first few days so make sure you got a good peeler on hand um, a microplane is always a good thing to have again um, zesting citrus is not something that most cooks want to spend their time doing so if there's an extra set of hands there that can do it for you uh, you'll probably get tasked with that so having your own microplane is definitely a good thing to bring a honing rod, of course, is super important as well. If you do get tasked with any knife work, uh, having a sharp knife and having a tool to maintain the sharpness of your knife is super, super important. Um, this guy is a ceramic rod, which is really, really great for your Japanese steel um, as it is harder than the steel that you're honing, which is important to getting good honing results. Almost as important as your peeler is going to be a pen and a Sharpie. Uh, make sure you go out and get a brand new Sharpie. You want a nice crisp tip on here so that when you're asked to label things, um, you get a nice crisp uh, label, nice and legible. So it sounds kind of funny, but uh, the way someone writes a label uh, can provide a lot of details on how organized they are in other aspects of their cooking uh, profession. So um, good, easy way to get someone off your back is just make sure you do the labels right. Super easy. You also want a pen on hand so that uh, at the end of the day when you're writing your prep list for the next day, um, you have a tool that you can do that in. And we don't have one with us here, but uh, I would also say a notebook is super, super important. Um, asking questions on a stage is encouraged. You don't want to ask too many questions, but you want to make sure you have a good understanding of all the, all the uh, techniques that are used and how and why we're doing certain things. Uh, so having a tool to write those notes down, super important. So in conclusion, basically what we're trying to get across today is is that you want to be as prepared as possible uh, while being as unobtrusive to the kitchen that you're going to stage in as possible. Uh, you are there to uh, show them how you're going to provide value to their kitchen. Uh, so taking up space, making uh, things inefficient, or generally just being a pain uh, is not a good way to get uh, hired at one of these restaurants. Um, coming in with your giant knife roll, throwing it on the table, taking up all this space, um, showing off all the cool stuff that you have, uh, not super important. What you're trying to show off at this point is how hard a worker you are, um, how amazing your attitude is, and how willing you are to learn. Um, those three qualities, in my experience, are the most important to uh, getting a stage. Um, chefs just want you to be uh, sponges. They want you to soak up all the knowledge. Uh, they don't want you to fight back with them or give them any trouble. Um, so just be an easy guy, good cook, stay focused, and you'll uh, land that uh, job at that restaurant that you've always wanted to work at. So thank you so much for watching, guys. If you have any uh, questions about my personal experience, uh, I'm happy to share with you guys. Um, again, I, I staged and worked at Grace in Chicago for two years, uh, and I staged for three months at a place called Mimo in Oslo. Um, both amazing, ama amazing experiences, and I would highly recommend putting yourself out there into uncomfortable situations because those are the times that you will grow the most and learn the most. So again, thank you so much for watching uh, and until the next video, stay sharp.